If you decide to get into overlanding, you will have to choose a starting car. These usually operate within 4x4, two-wheel drive, or of course, all-wheel drive. And with enough mods and skill, for the most part, they can keep up with each other. This build breakdown video will show you one of the most unconventional, yet effective overlanders that we've ever seen. All right, what's up YouTube? It's Jake with Adventure GT, and I'm here with my friend Jamie and their Toyota XB, Yoshi. It's a 2014 Scion XB. It was not originally supposed to be an Overland rig. <laughs> it spent a year and a half as a lowered VIP <laughs> build show car. <laughs> I met a judge at Import Face Off in Topeka and asked him what I could do to get more points. And he told me that I needed to lower it more. And I told him I couldn't because I wanted the ground clearance. I was still taking it camping at the time. And he said, if I didn't want to lower it, I had to make it look like an off-road build. And I apparently took that as a personal challenge. <laughs> you're and you're like, that needs to be lifted. Yeah. And just basically went crazy with it. I like to show people that you don't need some wild 4x4 to go out and explore. Front wheel drive is enough. Yeah, otherwise I haven't had a problem. A lot of people, front wheel drive, the thing is, is when you come up to, you know, a mud puddle or a sand pit or something, you get kind of spooked and you want to slow down. Front wheel drive, you have to power through stuff. So you basically just have to kind of send it. It's like, if you're really scared, stop where you are, get out and walk and see how deep it is, how nasty it is. It was a show car to begin with. So a lot of the original stuff are cosmetic mods or performance mods that look good. Like they're under the hood, there's a lot of stuff that is hydro dip. There's a TRD, strut tower bar, short intake, header, the general, it looks good stuff. And then the inside is all painted. It's teal and red for the most part. The hood is fur. <laughs> Like the roof is for the, the headliner. It's just like kind of awesome. Looks like we took Sully and skinned him. <laughs> or uh, Sisu from Raya and the Last Dragon. <laughs> yes, like my, my headliner looks like that. Uh, then that's also why the bed is more fancy <laughs> and not just everything isn't super utility because it still is kind of a show car and I still do take it to shows and show it off and it has its own trophy case at home and all that. The roof rack, like I said, that's from a Nissan Pathfinder. The basket is from Amazon because I am a baller on a budget. <laughs> the box is a hardened case off of eBay. It's basically military surplus. The brush guard on the front's from a Toyota Sienna minivan. <laughs> minivan? <laughs> yes! <laughs> and the Sienna and the XB are actually almost the same size right there. So it bolts up right up to the car. There's a second set of brackets on either side that I didn't use, but other than that, there's pre-existing holes on either side of the radiator mount that it's bolted straight to. There was no major modifications or nothing. Everything has been done by me except for the big side graphics and welding the muffler on. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just the I, I don't weld. <laughs> uh, the front suspension and brakes are from a third gen RAV4. Everything bolts right up. The suspension, the struts are longer than the XB ones, and then the brakes are bigger than the XB ones. So both of those are obviously a performance. The rear has metal two inch spacers under the rear springs to pick the rear up because the RAV4 struts are basically a two inch lift in the front. So it's two inches all the way around. And then the tires and wheels give it another about inch lift. So it's got about like a three and a half inch lift right now. Peaks? Yes, they're Falcon Wild Peaks. OEM size, size up? They're sized up. 
Yes, they're basically, it's basically the setup that factory on the RAV4 Adventure. What do you have for like overlanding gear then? You see the fire extinguisher in there? Fire extinguisher. Okay. Or if they're, if they're in the area of region. Those, those aren't bad either. They're not quite as... Full-size spare. Uh, nice rim. Yeah, yeah, that's the wheels that were on it when it was my show car rather than how it is now. Air compressor. That's my house battery. And then the inverter, there's a whole other fuse box on the other side of the battery that is for all of the extra lighting. So all of my extra lighting comes off of this instead of having to worry about draining the front battery. That's really nice. The chairs go in between the leg and the seat. That is a table. On the other side is a pop-up fire pit. What? Yup. Uh, tire repair kit, my saw. The black box there is all my cooking utensils and stuff. Big old first aid kit. My recovery gear is on top of that, so I have a tow strap and like hooks. And so the solar panel, my toolbox. It's basically straps. My super expensive impact. <laughs> Never leave home without it. Right. Well, because you know. Yes, I can break a tire loose. That doesn't mean I need to sit there and actually do it. I made it the way that I wanted it. So anything that I hated, I got rid of. Nothing annoying, no wind noise, no. No, that's that's something weird too, because a lot of people, um, especially with this car, they're like, it rattles in the roof. I think the fur headliner dealt with that. <laughs> I accidentally insulated my car. I didn't, like, <laughs> I didn't plan on doing that. Bye -bye. That's not necessarily the car. There's more like nitpicking with the build where it's like, um, I do want to change out the light bar because the light bar is a super cheap one. And after like a year and a half being on top of the car, it's got some moisture in it because, you know, it lives up there. And then it's also, I wash it because I still do show it. I do want to get ditch lights because the one thing we found out going through some of the places in like Tennessee and stuff is there's a total blind spot coming around a corner. You can't see off to the side. So it's like, yeah, I definitely need to get that Weird. to drive in. They're, in my opinion, they're fun to drive. They still do have a little power. They're still kind of underpowered for a lot of your newer vehicles because they're still just still like 2.4 cylinder, like 2.4 liter. It's like, yeah, but it still gets up and goes compared to the old super boxy ones. I still get about 25 miles to the gallon, even with the lift, even with the big box on top of it. So <laughs> that's absolutely awesome. That's a big thing is a lot of the more traditional overland rigs, they're getting 20 and less miles to the gallon. And it's like, I'm getting like 25. Like <laughs> I want to be able to pass gas stations and not plot out my trip by where the closest gas station is. <laughs> all right, guys, so that's basically all about this Overland build a Toyota XB with Jamie. And uh, what is your uh, Instagram again? Otaku Overlander. Go check her out, guys. Uh, amazing pictures if you want to see more about this Toyota XB, see more off road stuff. Otherwise, if you want to see more Overland builds, other unique uh, off road builds, I'm going to link a couple videos like here and here ish for you guys to check out. But that's a wrap on this video, guys. We'll catch you later.